Callie has the Mako color book. She can narrow it down. Now, I want you to flip through every page, every page. This one. Plum Crazy. That's like a Mopar color. That's for uh, Dodge Challengers and Daytonas and stuff. Are you sure? Let's keep looking. Flip to the next page. Welcome to Movies Garage, the dumbest automotive channel in all of YouTube. And today we're going to make this Porsche look as pretty as it runs and drives. Well, not today, actually this week, because I am going to take it to the paint shop to get completely repainted, except we're going to use Mako. Now, I bought this Porsche for only $6,000 a few months ago, and it didn't take that much money to sort it out. I have probably $10,000 into it now, but it still, it still looks like a hoopty. There are plenty of imperfections throughout this car, which I will show you in a bit, and it just it just looks like a tatty old Porsche, which, which I kind of like that I can leave this thing all dirty and tatty and not have to worry about it, but I can't leave things alone. And when the local Mako opened up for the first time, we've had a Mako in, well, probably 10 years, I decided, well, I should probably try them out, except, uh, except I decided to let my daughter pick the paint color, pick whatever she wanted. So yes, the infamous Mako paint job. I remember the infamous commercials back in the day with Burt Reynolds. I think $199 would get you the ambassador paint service and leave your car looking like new, which, which was not true. You had to pay for a lot more to get the car uh, actually looking good. So the other day I took this thing down to Mako. I told them I wanted it to look as good as possible, the best possible work they could possibly do. And it wasn't $200. They don't even have a $200 paint service anymore. I think their cheapest level is like five or $600. But they said to make this car look incredible, like brand new, where they would do everything, fix all of the defects throughout this car, color sanded after they painted it, really take their time with a base and a clear coat. It was going to cost just over $200. $2,000, $2,000, which is a pretty good deal considering a wrap would cost, well, roughly the same and it wouldn't look as good because there's all these defects throughout the car. Now they estimated about five hours of body work just because there is a lot of sanding to do. You can see in the hood, there's all these imperfections, these big chips. They have to make that all look nice. The front bumper has chips as well. Also a big scrape right here. Down the side, you have some dings they'll need to clean up. It's not as bad on this side, really. It's the other side that has most of the damage here. If something got rubbed up against, it kind of flexed and messed up the paint here. You have more chips, a big ding right here. Just, just a lot of little stuff. And if I tried to wrap this, it would immediately bubble and look awful. I could just leave it alone, but I've decided to make it look nice. I say nice, but I let my daughter pick the paint color and she picked a real doozy. Check it out. Okay, Ellie has the Mako color book. She can narrow it down. Now, I want you to flip through every page, every page, and uh, just just keep in your head which one's your favorites, and then we'll look at it, okay? So you're starting with with uh, 26.2 yellow. It's kind of a gulf orange. I'm, I'm good with that, all right? This one. Plum Crazy. That's like a Mopar color. That's for uh, Dodge Challengers and to Daytonas and stuff. Are you sure? Let's keep looking. Flip to the next page. See anything you like there? Okay. Okay, that works. All right, is there another page? Okay, Ellie, we flip through every page. You like the Laguna Blue, you like the yellow. Which other ones do you like? The, the, the Plum Crazy, yes. And what else? Was there a red that you liked? Well, I don't want to reveal it just yet. She picked a, a real a real doozy of a color. But first I want to show you what I'm going to do to prep this Porsche to get it ready for paint. And really there are some things that you should do yourself to make sure you're getting the best possible paint job. Now Mako, they're just a mask and spray kind of place when you could actually remove some of the things yourself and save them from getting overspray on a few things. And you know, the less masking lines, the better, the less chances of them to screw up. And really, with the Porsche, it is so easy to prep this car for paint. I think the designer of this car, in some ways, especially with the headlights, well, not the way they look, the way they engineered, deserves the Nobel Peace Prize, as I shall now demonstrate. Now, a lot of European and American brands are guilty of over-engineering a lot of things with their cars, especially the headlights. You've heard of the horror stories of a headlight going out and the whole bumper having to come off, basically the front end, to reach the headlight to remove it. But Porsche... Uh, Porsche is just not that way. It is the easiest headlight removal ever. I have a five millimeter extension on a quarter ratchet. I'm going to put it in this little hole right here, hook it up, and 
pop goes the weasel. <laughs> that's, that's it. A little, a little piece of the rubber weather stripping came off, but it literally pops right off. There's a little slider right here that twists and it pops the light out. It even plugs itself back in. It is that simple, really that simple. So I'm not going to drive it down there with the headlights out because it is so easy to remove. I'll just pop it back in and then take the two minutes when I'm in the Mako parking lot to pop the headlights off. It's the same with the rear. There's one 10 millimeter bolt that takes off the tail lights. I'm also gonna take off the Porsche badge because it's two eight millimeter nuts up in here. And then this thing's basically ready for paint. Well, as far as stripping things down. Well, let's see how this turns out. One thing's for sure, this thing is going to look a lot different in a week or so. Very, very different. Well, hello, it's been a lot longer than a week. It's actually been three weeks. I went and checked on the Porsche a little while ago and it's, it's a different color than, boy, it's a color and they're they're finishing it up. It'll, it'll be soon. But in the meantime, I thought you should tag along with me as I go in my Nissan Quest up to get a mechanical inspection. This is a really cool, spaceshipy, fun, and safe van that I replaced my Toyota Previa with. Uh, and it does have some issues. There's a big belt squeak, uh, the check engine lights on, and I'm, I'm sure some other things. Hopefully not too much because I only paid $4,000 for this van and it's probably, well, barely worth that. But we'll see what the wizard says and we'll check on the Bentleys too. There's some progress there. You hear that? It pops and squeaks every time I take a sharp turn too. Oh, wizard, please be kind. So, I can just rev out of it, though. That sounds horrible. <laughs> yes. Wizard, behold a Nissan Quest. How are your legs from doing your splits on the Bentleys there? I, I, I've recovered. You yes. recovered? Oh, yes. Okay, good. Yeah, the Quest is kind of splitting the Bentleys right now. It is. It's between the two. It's doing the Jean-Claude Van Damme. Yeah, and progress on both? So yeah. I hear? I've got a rebuild kit for the fuel distributor. I'll, I'll show you real quick. Okay. So this misfire that we've been trying to tackle for months, the next link in the chain is this crazy fuel distributor, huh, that's in a lot of European cars from the 80s and 90s. Uh-oh. Oh, I don't I mean, flip it upside down. Yeah, okay. you're breaking it. So here's your original one. And it's all crinkled, and if there's a tiniest little pinhole, which I believe there are, it's cracked in some of these, it causes a rough idle and a rough running. Hmm. This is from ethanol. Ethanol does this. Okay, so just over time that'll fail and may cause this misfire that we can't figure yep. out? Actually, the people I got a hold of that have, this is one of the kits, I'm still waiting on the rest. Oh, I see. But they said that when you see these crinkles in these little pockets here, very likely that's what's causing it. Interesting. They believe that's probably the culprit. Okay, and you got my climate control licked on the Azure, which is wrapped in protective yes. film. It's PPE'd. It's PPE'd for now. So what happened here? Hello. Oh. <laughs> Actually, the, the knob that you turn to select auto and high and low, mm -hmm. instead of selecting a position, the whole thing was turning. So it had just come loose. There was no flipping it on. Yeah. And then you told me there was something that somebody did that was stupid. There was a, a fuse socket missing a fuse and the fuse was stuck deep inside the glove compartment. So so somebody may have been playing with the fuses when the climate control suddenly quit working and uh, didn't put the fuse back in, which made his job a little harder. And I have no idea who that is. It's, mm. it, I, have no, I have no idea. Anyway, anyway, Nissan Quest, wizard. Quest. I have some issues. One is a massive belt squeak, and when I turn it kind of like jumps and squeaks, even when it's warmed up. So, oh, wow. a little scary there. I have a check engine light, and my van doors are, uh, well, here, I'll just show you. There it goes. I think some cleaning and lubing of the tracks and rollers will get you back in business on that. That's good. 
go, 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 go. Just barely. Yep. So can we see what my check engine light is as yeah. well? Let's do that with my handy Autel scan tool. You know what this reminds me of? Huh? Like a DJ at a party when he's spinning the record, just huh. and he turns the different. I, I never thought that. You never thought that. I thought it kind of looked like Darth Vader's mask, at least the vents and. Oh, it kind of does things. look like that. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting how the gauges are all in the middle. Mm-hmm. It's a cool vent. It is kind of cool. I like the windows, the safari windows. Yes. Evap small leak and the EGR temperature sensor circuit. Mmm. Those all sound like cheap things to fix, actually. He's reaching deep in the VQ. Deep in the VQ. Trumpet sounds. Just needs a new belt and readjust it. I can see little cracks all in the original belt. It's old. Okay. A power steering belt, and that'll take care of that. Nice. They're very common on these, actually. Okay. Well, all minor things. All minor things. I would say you could have this all fixed for less than a few hundred bucks. Perfect. Well, I appreciate you looking at it. We definitely need that belt split to go away. You can get the check engine light off. That'd be great. And, uh... Then hopefully I get my Porsche back soon. It got painted. Yeah, my daughter uh, picked the color. We're having Mako do it as well, so. What color did she choose? Uh, <laughs> it's quite a color. Quite a color, huh? Yeah. All right, Ellie, you flip through all the colors. Let's make our selection here. I know it's hard. Any color you want. Please not purple. Please not plum crazy purple. Please. Plum crazy purple. taken a few extra weeks than they said it would normally body shops are much worse than this it takes months instead of weeks and uh, purple certainly isn't the color I would have chosen for this car but it's not unprecedented the recent GT3s GT2 RS's uh, there's a lot of purple going on and there are plenty of uh, paint to sample purple Porsches over the years and looking at it in person well it's just absolutely gorgeous and the quality of this $2,000 paint job. Mako is not paying me to say this. This is after me paying full boat retail for their paint job. They may have gone a little bit above and beyond since it was gonna be on YouTube and you all would be seeing it. Uh, uh, but otherwise, for a $2,000 paint job, I have very, very few complaints. Overall, it is a near, I, I can't believe I'm saying this, near show quality paint job out of a Mako. It just shows the amount of prep you do in a paint job is what really pays off in results. So going to Mako and just having them mask everything off, sand it down barely, and then just spray it, it's gonna look awful. You pay up for them to really take their time and make all the panels smooth, which is what they did here. I think there's one spot in the hood where I can see maybe a little bit of a sanding mark, but just barely. But overall, there are very, very few imperfections. Orange peel is a really common thing that you see in paint jobs. My green Mustang has a lot of it because the guy shot it in his own garage. And this car, well, it was wet sanded beautifully. I found no orange peel. And the masking lines, they're also really good. They didn't take the windshield seal out, so they had to seal it back. But look how good of a job they did masking it off. Same with this door seal. They didn't take the door seal off. They just masked it off and uh, they did a great job. Another really challenging area is this rear spoiler, which I figured there's no way they're going to get this right. And look at this. Just look. And there was plenty of body damage and chips and scratches and dings, and they are all totally gone. Overall, <laughs> I I'm just astounded. And seeing the color in person, I thought I was going to hate it, but now I, I actually love it. Now, there are a few minor things that I could critique, but this is a $2,000 paint job, not a $10,000 show car paint job. And one of them is the masking of the roof up here. I wish they had gone a little bit further back and went ahead and gone all the way to the seal right here. And it's a little bit uneven. So maybe I can fix this with some kind of rubber masking type of tape to make it look like it's part of the seal. That way there's not this masking line every time the top is down, but but overall, that, that's a minor gripe for a $2,000 paint job. Also, the door jams, I had them paint them, and they did a fantastic job painting them off. They also cleaned up the interior for me since it was uh, getting a little dusty in there from their work. But uh, they kept the VIN plate 
taped off. They didn't remove it. They just uh, taped it off and sprayed it, which is fine. But they also taped off and saved this uh, Park Place Motor Cars, which is a dealership in Dallas, uh, nitrogen filled sticker, which they, they could have taken that off. So if I peel off this sticker, it'll be black underneath there, but I mean, I, really no big deal. They even went to the trouble of putting the headlights and the taillights back on for me, and they even buffed the headlights out a little bit while they were buffing the entire car, which is just above and beyond. So this Mako location in Wichita, Kansas is definitely worth your money if you're looking for an economical paint job on a car that's not worth all that much, which is Porsche certainly fits the bill. But now we need the final verdict of what the real boss thinks, and that's my, my seven-year-old daughter. All right, Ellie, let's get down here and see what you think. It's very purple. It's amazing. It's amazing. It's amazing? Yes. So you like the color that you picked? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love purple. Purple. So this paint job belly was $2,000, which is about 100 LOL surprise doll big packs. Is that worth it? Yes, purple is the best color ever. So you want to drive just to school when you turn 17? Lamborghini. You want a Lamborghini? Yes. You're, I'm going to ride your Lamborghini and crash them. Well, she said it. She's probably not wrong. Thank you for watching. <laughs>